Hello and welcome to the Science Fiction Book Review Podcast. My name is Luke Burridge and this is the show where I review every single science fiction book that I read as I read it. Sitting next to me, giggling at me, messing up the introduction is <laughs> Juliana. Say hello. Hello everyone. And it's so good to be back. I was travelling for seven weeks or something. Almost, Did, did yeah. we do a podcast on via Skype? I can't remember yes, if we did we, it. Yes, we actually made a podcast. Uh, oh no, not a podcast. But uh, No, we did. A we, little... No, we did actually because I remember. A podcast? Yeah, we did do a podcast for Skype because I remember getting your, your inset, uh, your little picture and making this a fake oh, Skype yes. window. I can't remember what we reviewed, but we're both, yeah, we, we both we did, read a book. We did, we did review a book, and, and also we did the snippet for um, Yeah, for the for Reading Jenny. Envy. Yeah, yes. for the Reading Envy podcast. Anyway, uh, today I got back from a trip um, seven weeks away, four, including four weeks with different two different trips to Antarctica, and then yesterday a 14-hour flight, and three flights the day before, and then another flight today. Anyway, I just got home today. And uh, I'm a it's bit jet lagged. It's really nice to be home. Yeah. You were saying it's really nice for me to be home. Yeah, it's just nice, you know, when I'm not just. It's just like when I'm home, or when I was home the whole time, I just didn't talk. Yeah. <laughs> it feels after a certain time, it just feels weird. Yeah. And sometimes I don't go out anywhere. I yeah. don't, like, I don't have so a So it's a like you're living job. by yourself. And then. It, it happened in those weeks that I spent a day without talking to anyone. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. Well, and, um, I was trying to be sociable. Quite, quite sad. Working well, on some cruise I, ships. I did try to, but sometimes, you know, sometimes it just doesn't work out. And then... Yeah, but it's good to be home. Now we can oh, talk. And we've yes. talked already about different things. We're like, oh, what about this? We booked some tickets to go and see Star Wars tomorrow as well, because you didn't see Star Wars. Oh, I saw I it. See it. I saw it with Spanish subtitles when I was in Peru for a week, which was good fun. Um, we're now sitting on the couch. So if there's some audio issues, Sorry about that. Oh, and we just ate burritos and I just burped. Excuse me. Right, let's get to today's book, which, um, yes. Oh, that does smell, doesn't it? Um, it's okay. It's, it's good. We we uh, both read while we were away. I actually listened to it as an audiobook and you read the ebook yes. Artemis by Andy Weir. Now, we, we listened to the audiobook of uh, The Martian by Andy Weir. Like, it was we like did. four years ago or something, maybe a bit longer than that. It feels like quite a long time ago. Yeah. And it was around about this time of year because I remember it we were going to the pass out juggling convention and it was on the way there and on the way back True. that we listened to it. Yeah. So again, it was like January, uh, you know, December into January a few years ago. Anyway, so his second book, like he could have cashed in. He had like a major movie, award-winning Matt Damon starring Ridley Scott directed movie made of his first book. And it would have been the perfect thing to, as that book came out, be like have a follow-up book ready to go straight away. But he didn't because he obviously wanted to spend as much time on his second book as he did on his first book. With There's a lot of engineering, technical research going into this. Oh, yeah, very, very nice. Um, how much do you bet, how much would you bet that Andy Weir learned how to weld in between that last <laughs> book and this book? Because uh. this is, you could say this is a science fiction <laughs> adventure movie, a, a, no, a, a movie, no, no, a book. It's There's yeah. a high story going on. But really, it's a book about welding. And it's kind of impressive how much welding goes on in this book. Uh, there yeah, was this, well, it's it, like the way that you say that now, it... It there's actually, a lot of welding. No, it's not that much. No, I was it's like I was timing some in, in some sections. There's more of it. And yeah, in the it, end it, section. Yes, in the end section. There was yes. this huge part. I was like, right, we're ramping up. There's this final. There's going to be some action. There's going to be some interesting stuff here. There's going to be some something disastrous happen, and then they're going to have to solve that problem, whatever. And then it was sort of like on the audiobook, it was like a a twenty five to thirty minute diversion about how to cut with a welding torch or a burning torch or whatever, how to cut through two walls. Now, that did, yes. that did, that it, I enjoyed it, but it was sort of like, we're doing this, we're doing this, with all this action's happening and people back there and people are following us around and we don't need to do this. And suddenly the story goes, screeches to a halt. And now it's sort of like, right, now we're going to spend an hour and a half's worth of time um, uh, cutting uh, holes through this wall and then welding different plates together and she's getting stuff from her like the main character Jazz she's getting stuff from her parent uh, from her father sorry about oh this weld and someone else is like no I'm gonna be here yeah. safety like I know underwater welding is like a big very dangerous thing like welding in a vacuum vacuum yeah, sealed welding yeah this is why it is so special yeah. why he's going. but let, let's just start at the beginning okay oh, let's okay. just okay so let's this just, is a, okay going back to the very beginning yeah so this, this is book a book actually came about out about welding no okay. it, it came out in november last year oh but so it's a pretty new so book. it is a very new book oh, okay i wasn't and sure how yeah it says here uh, you know it's um um it won an already an award 
What award? The Goodreads Choice Award for Good Fiction. Well, of course it's going to be. Like this. Like I say, this is a guy who has got a popular following because yes. his first book was very good. It kind of like set a new standard for, well, not a new standard, but like for a popular book, it kind of like was like, oh no, this is not, a, this is kind of not even a science fiction book. This is a science nerdery book. This is a, a technical manual yes. of how to build a space station on Mars. But and there's a bit of a story that goes along with but it. But also it is very fun because I'm guessing a lot a lot of people already this is like a thought experiment it's yeah. like you are by yourself you have yeah. this kind of expertise yeah it's total wish fulfillment exactly uh, it's like, totally what everyone yeah. was already thinking about and then now the guy wrote it down in yeah. all the specifics yeah so this one is actually a bit different because yeah. it plays on there's the moon. Yeah, it's a moon. It's yeah. not on the Mars. It's it's on the moon, so it, it's closer to Earth. It, the, that, the first one was called The Martian because he was the only person on Mars. Like, yeah. uh, Andy Weir. No, not Andy Weir. What was his name? Mark Watney was the only person on Mars. So he was the, the Martian. The Martian. Yeah. Uh, like, definite article Martian. He, that was him. And this could have been called a moon person. I don't know what you call like like a loony. I guess loony is always the word that loony. they... Yeah, they, he, that, he, he mentioned this kind of stuff, yeah. like the way that they, um, they want to be called. Yeah, what they what what the people on the moon want to be called. Yes. Lunars or whatever, something like that. I can't remember. Artemisians. Artemisians. Anyway, Artemis so, is a city on the moon. It's a, it's a big city. It, well, it's not even a big city. city. I wouldn't call it city. But they, like, they call uh, it the city. Uh, yeah, but it's like, uh, it's like the place where people live on the moon. It's the only place where private citizens can live on the moon. 2,000 people it's in a five. Settlement. Do- it's a settlement, but yeah. it's 2,000 people in five domes with connecting passage, connecting pass- passages. Yeah. Pass- passages. So let me. Pass- do you do you, What's you, up? you you listen to the audiobook? I listen right? to the audiobook. Yeah. So, I had the ebook. Yes. And what you what do you want to say? What do you uh, what you're looking for in the ebook? One very important thing is that of course. Talking to the uh, microphone. How can I just skip to the front of the book? What are you talking? Just search chapter uh, info okay. title. Okay. okay. What you're looking for? Oh, come on. Anyway, so because I read the book, I have something that you didn't have. You had a map. I had lots of maps. Oh, right. Yes, that makes sense. I did I did kind of get that. I to be yes. honest, I don't really think I needed this map, but like it does it does kind of make it, it like there's these five domes and it says Armstrong was the first dome, but then it became but because it was the first dome, it was the smallest dome, but it was kind of in the middle there. So yes, yeah. I do understand it and that's where the you know, that's the airlock and these are the air tanks that they have, yeah. So I guess yeah. some of the maps would be pretty pretty fun there um yep and uh i i get this i get this thing yeah these maps to be honest not really needed artemis is it's pretty pretty clear it, it was des- described i think very, it it's described very, well enough yeah. that you didn't need the maps yes. anyway but it, but it i is wanted fun. to mention that it is fun um, that there are maps there and uh so yes so artemis is the the settlement on the moon yeah and the story follows jazz bashir is uh, jasmine i think isn't it yeah uh, jasmine uh, yeah, but shortened to Jazz. Tell me about Jasmine. What did you did you like Jasmine, or what was going on with Jasmine? I um, yeah, I quite enjoyed hanging out with her. I uh, there are several things that I liked about the book, which would fit now. Okay. Um, can I now? Yeah, just tell, say? yeah, let's do okay. it. Okay. What I really like about Andy Weir is the way his language works. Yes. I noticed that with the Martian as well, it's such a, just a normal language. It's nothing yep. elaborate, nothing special. It's just how people speak. Yeah. And I really like that, uh, the way he writes yeah, it. Yeah, I really like that. In, but in some ways, it's because the voice of this is a first-person narrator. Mark Watney was a first-person narrator. It's sort of yeah. like, this is my diary. Here I yes. go. This is what's going on. Yeah. And now we have a first-person narrator. And unfortunately, you understand... It, I know it's weird to say this, but he's not quite good enough to pull off somebody who isn't just, um, a, a, you know, like a, a white male uh, n- nerd technician kind of person. Because Jasmine yeah. was in some ways a little bit too close to Mark Watney. And then you understand, oh, Mark Watney is probably a little bit close to Andy Weir. So you realize yeah. that, oh, Andy Weir, it's really difficult for him to just say, oh, I'm just going to be a, a 27 year or 26 year old woman from a Muslim family who. Saudi Arabia. Uh, for, yeah, who, Saudi Arabia um, background who really likes sex. But in, in many ways is is kind of just the, very much the same as uh, Mark Watney, which is yes. fine because, like you say, I enjoyed spending time with Mark Watney and it's, even though I say, oh, it's just this kind of thing but with a different costume. I actually quite enjoyed that mix of 
uh, pers- like of the personality. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it reminded me a little bit because I uh, on Sunday I just watched an episode of Firefly and it reminded me a little bit of Kaylee. Yeah, okay. You know, the kind of like... No, I didn't get that at all, but okay. I understand what you're saying. Um, yeah. You know, it's like this um, this certain persona. It, she she doesn't give a shit. And, yeah. Uh, and, uh, but on the, like, she, she kind of does, but... Here's the thing. You know. Here's... I mean, again, you say, is this a time to say what you like about this book? I really enjoyed a lot of what was in this book. Yeah. However, I think the main strength of this is in some ways, the descriptions of welding, but even though some of them go on too long, but like the descriptions of how the moon was settled and and I like it and other things, which I'll get onto. I'll get onto more of what I like about this. Yeah. But I do think the major deficiency in this book is this main character. Yeah. Again, someone who is fun to spend time with is fine. And she was fun to spend time with, but nothing more than fine. Does that make sense? Like it, yeah. Andy Weir isn't a good enough author to say like instead of writing about a white male technician who's about my age but happens to be on mars Mm. to watch this the the martian was very very low difficulty in terms of writing characters because he could just make someone fun he could make them like 70s disco music he could like you know he could make them swear a lot and tell fun jokes and be a little bit of a rebel but somehow be part of a team on mars you know he's like like you know he was in the fifth team to mars or whatever like that so he doesn't have to be the most amazing explorer or the height of character he could just be a, a person who is stuck in a bad situation and is using humor to get through a bad situation like yeah. to stop himself going crazy about being the only person on Mars in all this kind of stuff he uses humor and stuff to get through which is great it's a fun thing the difficulty level of writing someone who's literally isolated on on Mars and doesn't have a lot of interpersonal relationships with people that was all like there was a bit of that in NASA and you had the press secretary you know you remember the press secretary yeah, 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 who was this course. person who just again was swearing at people and whatever it's sort of like all oh, right okay so that book was low, di- high difficulty level in pulling off a book which kept up the tension and technical details enough that it was fun to read, yes. but very, very low difficulty measuring measurement in terms of interpersonal relationships and character development. Uh. Like Mark, Mark Watney started off as a as a wisecracking, you know, technician who was, you know, in the face of death, laughed in the face of death, and got through that. And it's an interesting character, but he kind of ended up in exactly the same place. In the, I think the movie actually did it better, where you see you see uh, Matt Damon later on. He's lost all that weight, and he just looks like a, like you can kind of see the craziness in his eyes in a way which yeah. doesn't come across in the book. Yeah. I mean, it's a different character, you know, in the it's movie in the book. Yeah. But in this what in this book, like the the character arc of of jazz does she she does things but she doesn't really learn so much she she reveal we have as part of her backstory revealed to us as we go through the book but she doesn't it doesn't really feel like she's developing as a character do you understand that like uh, and she she does a bit but again andy weir the author here has has aimed for something and this book I think was aiming beyond what he is capable of. He didn't bite off more than he can chew because in the end it's fine. But this book really shows up how much it's about welding and not about characters way more than the Martian did because the Martian was literally about biology. He, he's a, he's a, a technician who also happens to be a botanist on the moon or on Mars or whatever, you know, yeah. sort of like, hmm, it's a bit strange that this technician is also a botanist. It's like, yeah, that's what you need to be one of five people on the moon, on the Mars or whatever. Well, what I actually, I, I think I disagree a little bit with, with your, um, with the thing about the welding and the action and the personal, like the, yeah. the characters. I actually, experienced it different maybe because i've read the book and maybe because then this the the speed that you get it in yeah. is, is slightly different i it's think at your speed yeah um so i actually think there was the welding there was the welding bit at the end though and i think over the the, the course of the book she has lots of interaction with lots of different kind of people yes and here it's more like about um, how she has these interactions separate and then they come all together into like a team at some point. Yes. And it's more about her being able to, you know, 
unites to, the to team. To kind of manage the stuff. I, I never found it convincing. I never thought that anybody would ever follow her, lead, uh, take her advice on anything, work with her. Like, if I there met was... that person on the moon, yeah. I would literally be saying, this is probably one of the... And I actually wrote notes about this as we were going... To, as I was... Before I got to the dangerous parts of the book, yeah. I was like, this person is a hazard not just to herself but to everyone her lack of regard for other people and i find it utterly unbelievable that anybody would ever give her a third chance a second chance yes but a third chance at anything and what happens and her what happens to her at the end of the at the end of the book again maybe we'll get into spoilers later on i thought was the biggest cop out because if yeah. if that if she had done what she had done in this book she would be lynched. She would. There would have been a mob going after her. She would have been killed. She would have been thrown off the moon. And because that didn't happen at multiple points, and yet somehow she became like a leader and people were following her in these plans at the end, was utterly unconvincing. To, to the point being that... If this was a better writer, I'm not saying Andy Weir is a bad writer because again, this is this is just I'm getting out of the way like my main criticism of the book. Yeah. If this was an if this was uh, like Ian M. Banks or someone like that, where you're reading it and you're going, mm, this is a first person narrator, and you're like, is this an unreliable narrator? I don't think Andy Weir is a good enough writer to pull off an unreli un unreliable narrator, but. She keeps saying how she people keep telling her that she's a genius, and if she would only apply herself, she would get she would do well. And she and it's sort of like oh, and then the welding guild, yeah. guild came to me and wanted me to join yeah. the welding guild, and then the technicians guild came and wanted me there, and then the air supply guild they wanted me as well, and in the end I became yeah. a porter and was delivering things, and they you know oh, and then the spacesuit guild they or whatever the, the you know yeah, the, EVA. the the EVA, AVA guild, and I wanted to be in there, and they wouldn't have me, but they were just jealous that I was so clever and stuff like that all the way through this book i was like is is jazz utterly delusional delusional about her own capabilities and i was literally going through she was like she's made a plan and, I, and my notes are literally how the hell does she think this is going to work this is never going to work this is obviously a bad idea now here's the clever thing is that the ideas that she has are bad ideas and they play out badly and disasters do happen you know, and and I was thinking, is Andy we did did he did someone go through and say, ah, oh, like this is a good plan, but it's never going to work? And then he was like, all right, I'll write it so it never works. You know, so in some ways, I'm like, what I like about this book and what he's aiming for is sort of like there's someone who thinks they're clever and is pretending to be clever and telling us that they're very clever, making loads of mistakes. But if that's the real way, like she should die at the end of the book or she should be thrown off the moon at the end of the book because she isn't capable. Or if she is, she's utterly naive, is played for a fool time and time again. And it's really weird to read so read someone who's written a book like this, which the, is totally unreflective of the unreliable narratorness of the, the main narrator, this first person narrator of jazz. But... I kind of want to give him credit for writing a story where somebody is saying, oh, no, I'm a genius, I'm really clever, and then fails lots. But the payoff at the end of the book is like, oh, no, it turns out she is actually a genius and, and, and everyone does like her and it's all fine at the end. And I was like, no, if you're going to write an unreliable narrator, there has to be consequences. And there aren't any consequences. Do you understand what I'm saying there? Sure. So while I enjoyed the twists and the turns, which were, oh, this is going to be a good idea, and, and but actually it fails or whatever like that. Anyway, it's a tricky it's a tricky balance to pull off. And if Andy Weir was a better writer of characters, I would give him full credit for doing the unreliable narrator thing. But I just think he's just not good enough at writing characters. It's like I'm forgiving him too much. Yeah. For I'm reading I, too much into this. You know. You do. You totally do. Because you I, didn't read it that way at all. I I mean I did. Uh, there were some like bumpy bits where I thought ah oh, this doesn't quite this doesn't quite mm. you know that's not quite. Yeah. as convincing to me as yeah. like as it should be yeah as it should be and 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 as the the thing with the team and she manages the thing is totally the thing that i don't really see her like yeah. the thing is she is not doing all the things she's not a team she no she doesn't have the plan because it's other people it's her dad doing the welding it's, yeah it's the, the but, guy but in the end she the does it all no, she is the executioner. Oh, yes. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, she's but the hands and eyes of people. She's the hands yeah. and eyes of... She, she does the handy bits. But in the yeah. end, the planning and the, the, the clever thinking and like, yeah. making things 
is not really her. It's you know it's yeah like she, okay she, yeah I understand what you're saying. The one yeah. guy does the this this stuff and then the EVA guy yeah. who drives the thing. Yeah, the technician really makes clever. the widgets. The yeah, EVA exactly. guy does the so driving. She, yeah, she is not really. She isn't really the the mastermind. No. And. And I, but what I'm saying is she writes it as though she is. And, and, it, and But then the story plays out as and, though she is and, as well. And what was a little bit annoying, to be honest, was the, all the way, the, the constant saying like, oh, I, I get all the time, I get people to say to me like, you should have, you should put more like things Yeah, in wasted should, potential. Yes, wasted potential. And that then goes, she's like, oh, and my ma- memory is amazing. And you're like, mm, yeah, is, yeah. but is it really? Yeah, I don't and, know. And all these kind of little things, it got a little bit too much on there. Yeah. Like, it's a little bit too much of waving the... Yeah, waving hey, the flag. You, hey, you, you, remember you this part. You get this all the time yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I thought that was, there, there are a lot of little flaws in the thing. Yeah. What I really liked though yeah was that this story takes place over four days no it's a bit more than that no, no, she no, actually no, says four, she says it, she says at the end of a week the story the full story is a week i think by the time it the was end. literally four days oh really yes. oh okay and uh, that's what i like first because yeah. it's like a very condensed thing it's very okay, well, let's just say together. what the story is then uh but, but, I mean, i'm just saying but the whole point is that She's on. She's on. Uh, on the moon. There's two thousand people there, and a rich person says, "Hey, I want. I want. I need someone to do a dodgy job for me." And she's, and she's like, a, she smuggles. Things. She's she's a smuggler. She she's she's kind of on the dodgy side of the dodgy dodgy side of the law anyway. Uh, but she really she's kind of like living was it hand to mouth? Like she's got a tiny little um, coffin. I think they're called like you know, she doesn't yeah. have an apartment. She's got a a, ro- a room which is slightly okay. bigger than her um, in all dimensions, but she's only sleeping. slightly. Yeah. She sleeps there and she's like, I really need some this, and also I need exactly this amount of money. Yeah. And it's sort of like, well, what what does she need for that exactly amount of money? I thought it was going to be someone she she has to pay off something down on Earth because she she has a, a a pen a pen pal down on Earth, yeah. but it's it becomes quite clear. Oh, actually, she needs. I don't, don't want to give it away what the money is for, but it, it becomes quite obvious. It, yeah, it gets mentioned at some point. She's like, oh, I need this big chunk of money, and this guy, this Norwegian, is like, ah, oh, I need someone to do this big chunk of money, and she's like, let's give it a go. Yeah, um, and I made actually a note of this scene. Oh, because Juliana, I, Juliana made four notes as she read through the five. entire... Oh, five notes, okay. Five. So where are your notes? Um, your first note is, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, my first note is, ha, ha. To what? Oh, no, not this one. Oh, it's a different note. No, um, okay, this so, is great, this yeah. is great, this is great. Oh, the, the crying is, emoji, <laughs> what's that? Uh, so this is like... Um, the scene where she where she does the, um, the the talk to the guy who wants to. Uh, oh yeah, she yeah. does this whole ethical thing about oh well, it's ethical to do this and moral to do this, or should I do that or whatever. Like so this. it's like no, I was a smuggler, not a saboteur. 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 Yeah. And something smelled off about the whole thing. I'm sorry, but this isn't my thing. I said you'll have to find somebody, someone else. I'll give you a million slugs. Deal. Yeah. So and that whole like. It's so like what? money driven. And, yeah, like, she, the money can convince her immediately. It's yeah. not in only in that one. Yeah, there's in, a few in, times in other in other things as yeah, well. Yeah, there is a few times where it's it's she seems very I don't know like very mercenary about it. It's sort of like yeah. blah blah yeah, all of this, all these different yeah, kind of things. All the but, moral, all the moral. But in and the end, and I the money in a way that makes an interesting character that she is just like oh no, just give me the money, I'll be fine. Yeah. But that shows that literally that line there was something which made me think this person is the most dangerous person on the moon. Yeah. I literally thought that as I was going, as I, I might have even made a note about it. Maybe, um, I don't know, my, my, first, my first note is Artemis City, 2,000 people, a bit about the same size as a cruise ship. So I kind of liked that like life on the moon kind yeah. of thing. Oh, different people with different size rooms and some people you do that kind of stuff. Yeah. On, on Working on cruise ships, uh, you know, like I've just been on a ship for four weeks, about 2,000 people on there, including like on the moon, because it's kind of a resort town for people coming in. But then like there's the crew on a cruise ship who are there all the time the and workers. have a very different it's life. It's actually how it starts yeah, yeah. with saying like, oh yeah. yeah, you have the people who yeah. have the money, but you also need the people who yeah. work for them. Um, uh, so it goes, how does she think this plan is a good idea? Is lit- is like one of my first like, notes. But just before she, she agrees to it, she, she 
She talks she through how it's a bad idea. How it's yeah. not gone to work. It's like this is oh, this is a really bad idea. I shouldn't do this kind of thing. Money deal, and I'm like, oh shit, this is gonna go wrong. And I just knew straight away it was gonna go. It felt yeah, it was very straight obvious. away that yeah, it was the, gonna go wrong. This story is not about a success story. Yeah, yeah. So there's like two heists. One heist which goes wrong, and then another kind of heist to fix the thing that went wrong once we've worked out what all everyone's motivations were and the politics behind it and yeah. the crime and, scene behind it and all that kind of thing um and yeah. somehow that second one has like the uh, the backing of the- yeah 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 so here here's a weird thing politically i actually really liked this yes thing me too. because you start off and they were talking about it and i was just like Hmm. And as they, as they were talking about it, I was like, how does the economics of this... I was literally thinking about, like, okay, technically this is good. There's the domes, there's the double layer domes, there's this yeah. place and there's the tubes and all that kind of stuff. And he was talking through it. And this is what the book is about. There's lots of, like, air pumping from here to there and this thing over from here and there's these systems here and someone has a fault on their spacesuit and they've got to fix it here. And how do they do all these different kind of things? Oh, and how do you get tourists to walk around? Lot. Lots of valves, yeah. lots of pipes, lots of domes, lots yeah. of windows and all that kind of stuff. And I was really reading it all and I was thinking how does this work economically and like one of the big twists or one of the twists in the book which is just to say oh no no it doesn't it, the whole system is fucked like yeah. and it's sort of like oh it's actually it's all a money laundering scheme and this kind yeah. of thing again I don't want to give too much away from that but when it was saying at the end of the book when the, she was talking to this economist and she was like all oh, right this is this is this is weird this is not what I was expecting at all I was like actually I kind of did work that out yeah. and this is something which I kind of enjoyed about this book is because it's so much is set out I could feel clever working out the things that were going to go wrong or the things that didn't add up yeah as a, and it's so nice to read a book which doesn't have to use hidden information to like surprise you into touring. No, it's everything is out there. Yeah. Like here is here is literally um, uh, second heist. How is this going to go well? My note was don't fuck with the air supply. Next note, lots of welding. Next note, yup air supply and I was literally like this and it was it was one of those things where I was just like how does she not know how the, the air like don't fuck if you're on the moon don't fuck with the air supply and they're but like oh gets, and there's this- you're not the only person saying that it gets yeah. mentioned like all through all like there's what the two things that are yeah. really critical yeah it's like the air Fire supplies yeah and air. yeah, yeah. But it, it, because it's all oxygen it's like the oxygen yeah. they even said like on the saturn one rocket or whatever it was yeah. where they were like oh actually we can lower the pressure and just have pure oxygen but if anything catches fire it's it all gone like that yeah. anyway so they're talking about this thing and i was like this and it, 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 and this is the good thing about the writing is that the technical situation the world building is so good that when someone is approaching a problem i was like right here's how we're gonna do it i was already going no 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 because of this air pipe like <laughs> like i was actually just going no you just you just it you just wrote a scene of them go like driving a, a vehicle over this air pipe which connects that to there and don't what the plan that you're gonna do don't do it and as i was reading it was just gonna go this is gonna go really wrong and of course the big twist is that it goes really wrong and they've yeah. got to get out of that situation but it was one of those things where it's like oh this is actually a different reading experience and this is why it makes me think that jazz is an unreliable narrator because she is flawed incompetent but it's kind of but but like i say it's weird that it's written that she's the genius in this situation and she's the clever one yeah. like if i was a clever business person i would never give her a million dollars actually it works out like i don't know what the exchange rate was but it's like more than a million dollars to do this job i would never trust her to come anywhere near anything that i was doing and people keep trusting her so like just trust me this is gonna go right and i was like you've just destroyed all this stuff like how do we keep like, and then the, she meets the administrator of the moon who's this like Nobel Prize winning whatever well I don't actually I think she didn't win the Nobel Prize I think that's what she said it's like she should have won it for economics and then the Peace Prize or whatever but she you know yeah. is, was that one of the lines about that I, character I don't I can't remember. remember but it, and, and then these other people are like oh yeah just trust me just trust me on this I was like don't trust her and you know what they shouldn't have trusted her there, was, there, was, there would have been a different way to sort out this situation all of the problems in this book all every single one of them come from jazz being incompetent but the book is written though she's as though she is competent but all of it is her like every single problem comes from her being an idiot but the book isn't written that way and isn't resolved that way and that you understand what i'm saying like well what I... of the problems that are solved in the second half of the book which of those problems that are solved weren't caused by the main character in the first place 
None. All of them were caused by her, except for like the, the rich person, Tron, Trond, whatever his name was, uh, Trond Landvig or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't all. But the thing is, she would have never done this by herself. No, she wouldn't. So she was set up but, to, to, to to go this yeah, way. Yeah, but when Trond Landvig at the start was like, "Hey, I need someone to take out these things," in, and I was thinking, "Oh, this is going to be clever. She's going to hack into the control system. Oh, she's going to go over there, and she's going to. She has to just." just destroy some uh, tractors or whatever they are uh, and and I was like well okay this is going to be a bit tricky you don't and I was like well, it's going to be tricky to like knock them out but then in the future be able to use them but it's going to take too long and in the end it's sort of like oh my big plan was literally blow them up so <laughs> like, and I was like oh there's no subtle like and it's sort of like how did she think she was going to do that without getting caught and of course the twist is no she she gets caught it doesn't work <laughs> like all this thing doesn't work and again I don't want to give away too much but it's uh, but as I was reading it, I was just like, if what I really if, if I was gonna like the only way that this makes sense is if she if she was told that she was gonna get a million dollars to do this. But the plan was all the way through was that she she was she was gonna try and do it. She was gonna get caught, and then that was gonna be the next step. But it doesn't go in that way either. You know what I mean? Like like I I didn't quite see it like the way that you did. Yeah. And uh, but what I did see was more that like. The way that this, like, oh, she, she, she messed up. Yeah. And then nobody, nobody actually could put this on her. There yeah, but it was so 2, obvious. Two thousand people on the moon. That it's like, yeah. it's like the the perfect place to always have to to always know yeah. where people are. Yeah, and they even and, and they even say this at one point. They're like, oh yeah, we 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 have we have cameras on the inside of the airlocks, but we don't have the cameras on the outside of the airlocks. And there's no. And I was just like, what? Why? And I understand that, actually, because working on cruise ships, there are doors, which is kind of an honor system. It's like, don't open this door. And you're like, if someone did open that door and then a wave came through, that could, like, really damage a lot of, like, the, sh the ship. You know, like, because I know what those doors, those watertight doors, like, at the, yeah. on different levels are like. Don't, you don't fuck around with them. But there's no locks on them because in an emergency, everyone you has to go them. through. Of and, course. of course, there are alarms on them and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but, and a lot of this is sort of like, I need to get through this airlock without but being... But like, it doesn't really matter if there are 2,000 people yeah. and you want to know who and the, did it. Yes, you you're going to find like, them. <laughs> you, you, kind of, you, you kind of know, okay, like... 1,999 people were inside. Who was the one person that wasn't inside? Yeah. And you would know. But the thing is, they do know. And at one point, they're like, oh, how do you track someone? Oh, yeah, there's just someone who's got administrator privileges and you, you can just track everything that they do online and see where they are and find out their location, all that other kind of stuff. Yeah. And you're just like, how did she ever think she was going to get away with this? And at the time, she was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to get a million slugs and I need that for something. And you're just like, how... There's no, there is no perfect, like, and it felt, yes. it felt kind of disappointing that in the end, it was so unsubtle. And it's sort of like, it was, so, the, the whole book is very unsubtle. It, it, it's, it's yeah. very, it plays it out on the open. Everything is there. But she thinks she's going to get away with this. And I was like, how does she think she's going to get away? I don't think she did. But she was saying, oh, I just, she was like, oh, I'm going to go out there with my spacesuit, but I'm going to yeah, cover up my right, name tag. Right from the beginning, she, she, she said that she, that wasn't going to work and she knew she wasn't going to make yes, it. Yes, I just didn't understand. I just didn't. Anyway. So I think we've gone into the story, and I mean, we've—I I don't want to spoil anything. I think we've—, we've you already got, did spoil. No, it. there's there's bits and pieces. Again, this is this is not a book about the outcomes. This is much more a book about the technical details yes. along the way. What I loved I, about this oh, book. Oh, sorry, come on. What were you going to yeah, say? Yeah, I wanted just to just say my biggest point that I l like most. Okay. Can I say that? Yeah, yeah, go for it. What I liked most about it was that there was no fucking sex scenes, no fucking... Uh, no, how do you uh, say that? How do you say that? I because, know, I get it, I get it. I found it was, that... It, if it would have been, no. it would have been the worst yes, ever. Yes, I know. And it didn't need it. I'm and actually, it didn't have it. And I like that. I actually mentioned to you when you started reading it, I was like, did you get to the condom scene yet? Anyway, there's Chekhov's condom in this book. Now, it's not Chekhov. It is Chekhov's condom. The, Chekhov's condom is, if there's a gun, if you see someone, a gun on the wall in scene one, in, in act one, in act three, the gun has to be fired. Someone has to shoot the gun. Like, that's the whole point. The gun on the wall? What in do you a, mean? In your play, if you go to a play and you sit down, in the theatre and someone oh. has done a scene this is Chekhov's oh, gun okay. and there's a gun hanging on the wall on the back of the stage and yeah. there's just a gun there and then there's lots of drama and there's lots of conflicts and stuff like that 
the gun has a purpose. The gun has a purpose. Someone's going to okay. pick that gun up and shoot someone by the end of the sure. thing. Okay, so that's what Chekhov's gun is, and you see it time and time again. Someone will introduce something at the start of the at the start of the of, of a book or the start of the story, and you'll well, be like, it wasn't really at the start. No, no, but I'm just saying you'll be like, hmm, that's been mentioned four times already. I wonder if that's going to come in. Anyway, Chekhov's condom. I never thought it was going to lead to a sex scene because it just didn't feel like that kind of book. Mm. But I was like. Chekhov's condom, this new tech, this new, uh, in newly invented super super condom that can be used many times and never pops and stuff. And I was like, this is going to be used to see the se- description of that. To, to, yeah, so- <laughs> but it's going to be used. So they're going to use it to seal an airlock. Or it's going to be in a book, like or at the end of the and literally at the end of the book, she was like, how am I going to get out of this pressure situation? I was like, Chekhov's condom. You've got a condom, this super condom which never bursts. Climb into the condom. I don't know what you're, you're going to do, but like, do the thing with the like. There's a valve there. You actually, all this time, and I was like, M- this is my note at the end of the book. At the end of the book, thirty nine minutes remaining. One valve away from victory. Got to use the condom. There's actually a, a thing. Not, like, I was one <laughs> valve away from victory, and I didn't know how to get through it. I was like, this is it. She's going to use the condom. She, it's going to happen. Chekhov's condom is going to be fired. Well, no, uh, Chekhov, she cuts it's Svoboda. Yeah, but whatever. It's Chek- <laughs> for the narration purpose, the storytelling purposes. Chekhov's condom, and it was it was never. <laughs> she didn't use it at the end. No, of the- I don't it, even think she had it on her. No, well, no, she must have. I don't no. even know. But she was always like, and, and the guy giving it to her was like, "Oh, have you tested the condom yet? Have you tested it out? Because you just want some yeah, user, you just meet- want some user feedback about this yeah. condom. Every time that you meet, uh, it was like, have you used the condom yet?' And she was like, "Stop being creepy. It's been like one day. How often do you think I have sex?" And, she, and he was like, "Yeah, pretty often." And he was like, "I'm gonna have to teach you how to talk to girls and things like that." Yeah. So yes, in one way. She, that there was no sex and also that the condom wasn't used in anyway so yeah that is a plus about this book because it, I think it would have been a bit cringy yeah. to actually have the sex scene yes. however there's lots of talk about how Jazz has a lot of sex or that, has had a lot of yeah. sex but that just I think that that the, the talk about her in that way just puts a, um, like a I don't know a patina to her personality. Yeah, it's, it's more about to show that she's kind of like a a, a, a worldwide a woman. She just acts totally like a guy. Yes, in lots of ways. Yes, she is one and of the guys a, in a way. She's a guy. Yeah, and, and she has sex where she wants and does this, and she. It's she, very sex positive. It reminds me actually this a lot of this. Have you read the Moon is a, Moon is a Harsh Mistress? No. Anyway, there, there's a lot of Moon is a Harsh Mistress in this book, including a lot of the sex positive stuff. You know, however, it is a bit weird how sex positive she is. And they're even saying, oh, yeah, sex on the moon is really great because yet. But she never says there was never that moment where she says, oh, people always talk about how sex on the moon is really great because, you know, it's all there's, you know, there's a right amount of ten- There's even I yeah. think there's a it's an Isaac Asimov book called On um, on Mars Station with Martha or something like that. And it's a whole book about how how great it is to have sex in Mars gravity. And <laughs> mo- the moon is it not enough gravity. Zero gravity in sex is actually really difficult and, and needs straps. Yeah, it's the like sixth that. of the gravity of yeah. the Earth, isn't it? Yeah, on the moon it is, uh, but yeah. on Mars it's like a third or whatever it is. I yeah. can't remember. Or, uh, uh, half the gravity. I can't remember. Okay. But they're saying, yeah, one third gravity is better than one sixth gravity. Anyway, she keeps... T- she, and it, this is mentioned a lot of times in this, but we never actually get the moon gravity sex scene in no. the book, and which I, is fine. I totally... You know... Currently, I'm listening to the Dreaming. Book. Oh, you don't dreaming have to go on about I, I Peter F. Hamilton say, sex scenes again. Holy fuck, this guy! What the hell is wrong with him in his life? Yes, he, he, you totally think like, what the hell is his problem? Okay, let's get away from and Peter F. Hamilton. That was let's go back to Andy Weir. Very nice, very relaxed. I didn't have to like. There were no. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. I also like the twist with the ex-boyfriend. With, what what ex boyfriend? The gay guy. Oh yeah, that okay. Was fun. Yeah, but, but it did. Uh, some of that did feel like box ticking. It's sort of like, okay, I can't just have a white man as my protagonist. So let's have a a, a Muslim or an Arabic background woman and then who you have is a, a who's Ukrainian a young woman, technician. a Ukrainian guy, and then a gay guy. But he can't just be gay. Oh, let's have him Jewish and gay, yeah. and then let's have a black well, person. Yeah, but and let's have a token it's white quite, person. Quite nice. Yeah, yeah I know. Quite like, oh, one thing the I Portuguese wanted to person. mention. Yeah. One thing I wanted to mention very like because it was standing out from the beginning it was saying at the beginning they live in Nairobi time on my, on the moon and I was yeah thinking, how why and then it of course it goes it's explained on and, why and Nairobi explained. time and and the, the way that it is explained is so fun because it is so totally unexpected of it's what so like what that Nairobi would, is the space center if you would center. think of our society right now 
Who would you think is the main sponsor of a moon base? Uh, unfortunately, I've read Alistair Reynolds' books, so in his like, there's a like he literally wrote a three-part series about elephants in space, and the reason there's elephants in space is because the main space industry Sponsors. place is Tanzania. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, well, anyway, and they use it's... and they use Captain Mount Kilimanjaro as a as a, as a, a space ramp. as a ramp to launch <laughs> yeah. things into I space. Mean, so they, in, in this entire and family idea, and this stuff oh, like that. Obviously the idea is good because yeah. it is around the equator. And yeah. I really like the and that's idea. literally what it is. It's sort of like yes. what do you need? And you're like, oh if you're gonna launch stuff into space from the equator, yeah, Africa's on the like but yeah. what part of Africa's on the equator? Yeah. And it's sort of like, oh yeah, Kilimanjaro pretty much there. Take yeah. off from there, you get the the, the low the low air pressure at the top or whatever it is you know well in this book it's not tanzania it's, yeah, it's, it's kenya. kenya but it's uh, you know what i mean I, I really like the i mean for me it, obviously i haven't read this book and, yeah. and so for me it, it came a little bit more surprising and it, like really clever in a way yeah. that it is a bit annoying actually when you read these uh, quite a few of these other books and you're reading it and you're going has nobody like does nobody in science fiction circles read Alistair Reynolds except people who read <laughs> Alistair Reynolds because like there's just so much stuff where you just go yeah he, he did this like 15 years ago in like his third <laughs> novel he's done this whole story and done this whole thing I mean it's not totally like that but I mean we're currently reading an Alistair Reynolds book which is I, not groundbreaking in any way but again there's lots of stuff that I read in other science fiction books they were like do people not read like Ian M. Banks and Alistair Reynolds and some of these other people. Maybe, which they, has been done. maybe the, the writers do. Well, maybe. Read them and, I don't know. And the readers don't read well, them. Well, I, I don't know. It's a bit strange. And there was one thing that I need to ask you about because I read the book and you listened to the audiobook. Okay. There are things that you don't see uh, when you listen to something. Yeah, like what? There was, you know, the pen pal. All right. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's actually been done pretty well in the audiobook. That's no problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. It might be done at some somehow. I want to show you how it's done in the book, in the yeah. writing book. Yeah. It's done like this. Oh, right. Like text, text backwards and forwards. Like, so... Uh, no, 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 no. This is one part. This is all jazz. This is Kelvin. So, uh, so some why is reason, some of it in blowled or not? Exactly. My question, what, was it like different in the audio? Did, did they change the... Yeah. The, I don't know. No, no, it was just sort of like, dear Jazz, dear Kelvin. So it was kind of obvious who was talking there. Yeah, and, but uh, then it's like always like you have... A little, I don't understand why. And then suddenly it gets bold and yeah. then it gets, gets normal Maybe that's just again. a PDF uh, thing. Oh, no, this is this is a... It's, app, uh, it's all... No, no, Kindle. It's, it's a Kindle it's book. It's a Kindle it? book. But yeah. and it's okay. like every time yeah. she writes him, it's this like... There, again. Yeah, yeah thin, I wonder why. Thin, thin, yeah. I, I have okay. no idea. Don't worry about it. And sometimes it's more, and then... Less. Can I talk about what I liked about this book, then? Sure, you, you, you go. I, I didn't have so much to say no, currently. No, but it was good. It was I good that we got there. Have my the thing, your main positive was the negative of... Again, I thought it was a little bit weird having... Uh, I don't know, it, it just, in some ways it felt a little bit creepy about talking about someone who was so sex positive, written by... A white guy about I know I know it's weird that's just my that's just some of my stuff like did I need to hear so much about the sex life of a 26 year old uh Arabic woman really? on the moon you thought there was much she talked about sex a lot there was a lot of talking about se her past sex stuff and she's dressing up as a hooker and she's like oh yeah prostitutes are fine i don't have any problem with them but it's not kind of me sex in moon gravity sex in there, there was a lot of mentions of sex i thought that was totally again, casual it's and fine. i really like the casual i know it was, of it. again i i don't have any problem with it i think it worked okay and that the condom wasn't used in a sex scene and that there wasn't a sex scene is good because it would have crossed the line into yes. way too creepy at exactly. that point I'm just saying it felt a little bit it felt in, in some ways a little bit too like oh no no it, it's uh, also sex positive like it's fine you know to be you know it's good that's kind of anyway what I really liked about this book and I mentioned it a few times is just the the world building about this and all the characters like how many different professions do you need to be on the moon what is needed and it does feel like he's gone the right guilds. yeah the guilds yeah. are great the e economics are great the criminal underworld is great like all of these different things and all the different nationalities is like going oh when someone gets to the, the moon somebody who just happened to be Vietnamese was the first guy who worked on the air pipes and then he's and sort of like, like he's sort of like oh yeah, yeah he's get, oh his family wants to move it with him there. oh yeah and so now oh yeah like all of this thing is just that's just a Vietnamese thing now so all of the Vietnamese yeah. do that and then oh and there's some Ukrainians and they're oh yeah all the Ukrainians are just in charge of the IT. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah whatever it is whatever. like that all departments and stuff and I totally understand that and, oh it's handy because yeah if you want to have an operation all the air 
people, they're going to have the instructions of Vietnamese because they all speak Vietnamese. So yeah, well, let's just have all the instructions of Vietnamese. You know, I really liked all all of that world building, like uh, that where the domes are and what was connecting them. A few times I was like, hmm, how, that doesn't sound right. And then later on we found out, oh no, that wasn't right. That was actually a bad thing. You know, that was yeah. a design flaw. Yeah. So again, what I liked about this book so much is that I could, I really got into the story and could really enjoy the story so much because the world was built up so well that none of the twists got to me. Well, not none of the twists, but like everything that was laid out played out so logically. It's like literally, I'm going to describe a world so well that you don't have to even like, uh, yeah, it's sort of like here. It's like it was like a mathematical formula. Yeah. Plus one idiot. How is the, how badly is this going to go? And because the the mathema- the formula was described so well yeah. that when you just go and now let's throw in the wild card, let's just throw in the 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 Shake element the element yeah. of chaos or whatever it is, yeah. you know, um, like throw in that uh, that the, that chaotic element into it. And how is it going to spin out? And I was like badly, and it, then it spins out badly in a logical way, you know. So like I say, in a way, I kind of wish someone had written this story. Set, laid out all the characters, laid out all the de- kind of different stuff, all the different political stuff, yeah. all the different economic stuff, all the different technical stuff, all the scenes with welding, except maybe one of them cut it in the length in half of the welding scene near the end of the book. Um, all that kind of thing. But then just get someone to just do a pass over this book and just go, okay, this character, this main character, is like either needs to be written better, less stupid, less naive, or have a little bit of self-awareness and really she needs to die at the end or there needs to be some consequences at the end because it it seemed a little bit too much of a Hollywood ending for this whole kind of thing and I know it's a weird thing to say that I like the different twists like as I'm when I'm reading a book like thinking oh this is going to go really wrong yeah. And then it goes wrong in exa- not exactly yeah. the way that I think it's going to go, but like like exp- the wrongness expresses itself in a very satisfying way yeah if a better writer could have reflected that back into the story and back into the characters in the book better. Yes. There needed to be some characters who weren't won over by Jazz and actually was like, no, you are the most dangerous person on the moon. What? I always thought she was the most dangerous person on the moon. Uh, and you know what she was in the, in this book? She was literally the most dangerous person on the moon. I she think now, was, if, if the people listening to this now count up how often you said... She's the was, most... And she's like, we've got to, we've got to fight off like the bad guys, now. fight off the bad guys. Okay. And I was like, there I, are better, less dangerous ways to yeah. fight off the bad. There's, there's, like, okay, when all the bad guys arrive, just kill all the bad guys, and you'll probably get away with it. Okay, let me, let me say something. I think actually the book is kind of like, do you say that in English? In, in German, you say null Rechnung. It's like when you, you have a, a, a two sides of a, of a equation yeah is that how you say it? yeah it balances out it yeah. balances out into zero and this is what happens in this book to be honest in the end nothing changed yes well it kind of does and what changed is that they now know okay we should uh, check this system and no, that system no, but and this no, system no it isn't it's yeah. like a billionaire wants to, wants something oh and it turns out if you've got billy if you got billions of dollars yeah you can just buy your way out of anything and i'm like can't be the message of the message no, of this book. It? The message of this book is: if you have enough money, you're gonna be fine. Yeah, but that's that's how capitalism works. Yes, I know, and th- that's what I and it like. It doesn't matter if it's on the moon or no, on the earth. Again, that's literal. That's literally the economic lesson. When they have the economics lesson at the end, where she has it and she goes, "Oh, economics is scary, man." And I'm like, "Yeah, it is." And that's what yeah, I like about is. this book is that it. All of the systems get, work out. What I'm saying is she does get... I mean, of course, you can you can talk about how bad the punishment is that she gets. And she, if it is worth... Psh, if it is worth what... Like, in, in relation to no, what she did. No, but the point I is... Think, I think... I personally think it is enough of, of a thing to, to her. And it would have been not... Uh, no. Yes. No. At one point, someone in authority over her... She says to her... her someone in authority, she says... Um, Oh, so what was your plan? And they pretty much, she pretty much was like, oh, Jazz, you were my plan. Like, my plan was to let you sort this out. Again, how can anyone think that's a good idea? 
Like they were, and at the end she says, "Oh well, all this stuff I think about she all." Just, that, she just got used by lots of people. I would never. It's she's too dangerous to use. The people, every person who used her, literally, either died or almost died because they trusted her. This is what the book. This the story of the book is someone who is a naive idiot who keeps being used by people and is keeps being trusted by people and at every single turn ends up harming those no, people but, but, and people keep trusting yeah, her yeah, and people wanting to use her and work with her. No, but was killed. Because- Shut, don't give it away. You know, you're spoiling stuff. I never said, that's never been what I've said. Don't oh. give away who killed. I, what I'm saying is but lit- I'm saying- literally no, I- Every single person she works with either dies or almost dies because of her actions. No, but that's his. He he put what? this all in into the rolling. Yes, and then he gets killed because of how? it. How had nothing to do. No, no, no. That I, I, she was. How? Why would somebody who is made out to be that clever and that rich and so amazing? Ever look at this character and think, yes, this is the person I'm going to trust. It, of course, it turns out badly for him. But how did that person, how did anybody in this book ever look at Jazz Bashir and think anything other than this person is dangerous and irresponsible and naive and easily manipulated and easily used? There is nothing in this book which ever makes me believe that she is actually a genius, that her plans are ever good, that anybody should ever trust her at all. What well, did what does she ever do to get to appropriately gain anybody's trust and let anybody think that anything she's going to do is going to be a good idea ever? Literally name one thing that she does ever in this book, which either turns out well or is a good idea or doesn't ca- cause harm and damage to anyone in the book. Yeah, yeah but that, that, the point about this book is that it concentrates on this one thing. No, no, no. Her entire... Everything oh. in her backstory is a disaster. It's all bad. Everything that she touches in the past has been bad. With the stuff with her father, with the stuff yeah, with her relationships. Point, yeah, but that no. But at that the point, the book begins with, with her, her failing a test. The book begins with her failing a test, with not looking after her equipment properly, and it continues on from yes. there. But the, the only thing the, she the, ever the, does is become a minor team member in a fire operation. But the story with her father comes down that she is like you know, it's like the typical teenager thing. Yes, and, and, and she doesn't grow. By the end of the book, she is still an idiot, irresponsible teenager level at, at that level. Yeah, the yeah, stuff, the irresponsibility yeah. she has with that backstory with her father, and that gets her estranged from her father, and that she wants the money to make up for it and stuff. She never gets beyond that situation of like, I'm going to th- properly think through all of the consequences of my actions and decide is this a good idea or not. She actually does make this decision at one point and says, No, this is a bad idea. And then someone says, A million slugs, and she's like, Deal. Like, that's the like she she could yeah, be need, better you, but you need to question what is the driving force behind she her wanting she is a dangerous naive easily manipulated idiot mm. that is her character and again a better writer a better idiot. writer would have somebody else within the book notice that and acknowledge that and there be a consequence of that and that's that again this is that, this that, is my main thing the, that i the, like the, I about think the, the book. one person who does see a little bit of that is the the sheriff kind yeah of the guy. sheriff guy yes he does see it and he's always every single time he meets her is like okay i know that you're a bad guy i know that you're an idiot i know that you're dangerous but at this moment my hands are tied for various reasons yeah so there is that one character but in the book he just becomes like a figure of fun and a sex object for her to lust over but then kind of be what? like she's she's always horny for this guy she's constant no. she is literally saying oh i see his muscles oh i wonder what her his arms would be like around about me oh i i you know i she's literally lusting after the sheriff guy it's in the book it's right there in the book she is horny okay. for that guy sure yes why not why can't a woman not be it, horny about somebody but 
He's the he's the enemy. Fucking hell. He's, this is why I like this so much because it's so fine. Why can't just the it's woman, fine. Like, you know how many books I've read where, where the, the guy was the, constantly thinking, yeah. oh, sex, sex. Yes, oh, I understand. Sex. Again, oh, I woman. like the, I, let's use I the like woman. the let's sex. Use the woman okay. for uh, an option. Okay, I just want to quickly before we go on for more than an hour. Uh, narrated <laughs> by Rosario Dawson, who is uh, uh, Claire. Uh, is it Claire Templeton in mm. the Avengers? Not the Avengers. The Revenge? No, not the Avengers. The what? Defenders. She's oh, she's in yeah, Daredevil. She's the nurse, she's the nurse in Daredevil. Somebody. She's just Claire, the, Claire she's Temple. The nurse. Uh, anyway, so she she does the audiobook narration. Oh, she nice. uh, it's it doesn't say it doesn't say read by Rosario Dawson or um, narrated by Rosario Dawson. It said performed by Rosario, and they've got an actor in, and she really wants to show off her acting. Yeah, and yeah, it's good actually because again, a lot of this is like a lot of it comes down to the delivery, and I think if I was reading it on the page. I would have taken different different readings from some of those, but again, yeah. I can of, I can always not always I can often like disconnect what the person is saying, yeah. and then take my own reading of that. Okay, um, her some of her accents are really good. Her, there's this one character, the barman, you know, in the in the barman yeah, or something like that. The bar uh, is it? I couldn't work Bob, out. Bob Billy, no. Yeah, Bob, Bob Billy, Billy or, something. or something. I couldn't work out if he was Cockney or Scottish. Now those are two very different things. But she don't does. Think he, don't think you were Scottish. She, there's a lots of Scottish. I mean, I should play you parts of this audio work. Okay, uh, we're in the book. It, it's it, some awful, awful English slash Scottish accent going on there. And there's a few other accents where I was like, Meh, not quite hitting it there. But overall, it's fine. You know, the good thing, the good part of it is that each character does have a distinct voice, and she she pulls it off well. And yeah. it was a fun narration because it was a performed narration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get these by when they get these actors in to do an audiobook narration. They're like, oh, okay, right. So this character and, and I. Just, this and it's really yeah. big and then take it on small and then big and it's just like yeah. and normally the narrators who are like professional like full time audiobook just narrators audiobook narrators they know what to yeah. do to get to get a book through in a good performance but kind of like a, a neutral enough performance that the, the writing comes through that the acting and the performance yeah. doesn't overwhelm yeah. the, the writing yeah. um, but anyway it's a, it's a good one I think I think this is a little bit like when you have musical movies and, and yeah. you have just yeah. actors or you have actually professional musical singers yeah who actually yeah. yeah the singers are just effortlessly make an amazing song and yeah. the actors really work at the music and yeah. put in a lot of yes. oh, uh, yeah. I, I need to talk to you about one movie uh, after the podcast oh, okay, it has okay. nothing to do with this so, okay uh, right let's wrap um, this one up then uh, and, and, anything and else I you think, want to say I think reading it actually oh. I think especially in this book is a very distinct different experience yeah get, because as you as when I read it I'm kind of like sometimes not really skimming yeah. but like if if there are certain scenes in my head that are clear I'm not reading every single word and yeah. I think if you have an audiobook you just hear more yeah that you can't not hear yeah, yeah I get you I you get know? you yeah I get you about that so um, um it, I actually made a note I was just looking through my um, uh, notes pop culture references kind of a minimum not very many pop culture references oh there, there was, was one that Star I was Trek, wondering to, there, there was one Star Trek it. reference another thing that I don't understand is a reference to the good the bad and the ugly does a 26 year old yes. moon girl yeah in I say moon girl you know like yes. someone who, who was 6 year old when she moved to the moon yeah and grew up there would she know the good the bad and the ugly now, no. I know this is weird. Don't think I literally so. yesterday or two days ago, after listening to this, I listened to a podcast and somewhere said, it, some guy who uh, has got like a ten-year-old son and saying, "Yeah, I, we're, my son is going through, is going through a, a cowboy stage, and he wants to watch, you know, western western stuff." And so I showed him some classics. I showed him Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, and you know, whatever these are, Lucky, not Lucky, that Luke, could, uh, Cool Hand Luke, and happen, this kind of stuff like that. But, so, but I understand a, a, a ten-year-old boy living in Texas going, "Oh, let's watch some westerns," and his father saying, "All right, let's go to some classics, Good, the Bad, and the Ugly." Yeah. But would that happen to a six? someone who moved to the moon from Saudi Arabia when she was six year old would the good bad the ugly be the popular culture reference what, what's your I have another sentence that didn't quite fit yeah it'll be guarded better than Fort Knox I know Fort Knox is a general is a general statement Fort Knox is known as the best guarded place in America but it yeah, is a very American reference yes exactly it's a very yeah. American reference by a Saudi Arabian 
person living on the moon. Yes, it's it, it doesn't completely uh, make sense. I'm not- but however, in say the movie, the Mission Impossible movie, like in the first movie, there is that scene where he says, "Oh yeah, I've got this helicopter. I'll f- I could fly this helicopter in and out of Fort Knox, and they wouldn't even see me coming." And that's to set up the end that he actually flies the helicopter down the Channel Tunnel, chasing a train down the. Have you seen the? the, the we saw that first one. Yeah, didn't yeah, we, we, we he, watched all. Yeah, yeah, we actually, yeah, we did. We, we, we even talked about it on the podcast yeah. where he he does fly a helicopter into a tunnel, and him saying, "Oh, I could fly it in and out of Fort Knox," is the whole point of Mission Impossible is like we're going to break into some. Yeah. Where, but which it is, is very obvious that this yes, is what they are it's doing. It's an American thing, yeah. And I don't think it would, yes. like, if if there are people living on the moon, yeah. I don't think this would be the but, thing. But um, anyway, let's let's say. watch let's watch the new Star Wars movie and we can have a, a, another conversation about that. Oh, okay. I know it's weird to say it's weird for me to sure. say that. No spoilers at all. But there's a few lines in the site. In, don't. In, in, in just saying, there is one line in there where they say, "Oh, it's, no, it's, I don't even want to hear that. Uh, okay. I just want to watch it tomorrow." Okay, you, you'll you'll pick up on some of the ways. I'm sure. The way that you're going. They don't have them in the Star Trek universe. You know? Anyway, so uh, okay. Yes, Anything my uh, my my one of my things is that when I was saying about uh, like guessing what some of the twists and turns are, I actually said a lot happened on one day. Is her valve part of the plot? Is a broken valve on a spaceship part of the plot too? Space suit on her spacesuit. Yeah, she has a spacesuit and a valve break. This is like scene, one. You know, <laughs> chapter one, scene one, line one. Oh, yeah. the shit! The valve is broken and stuff. But then on that same day, like four other life changing things happen, like yes. massive news events. If they would normally happen, like some, you know, there's a fire here and another thing there and another meeting there and all these different kind of things happen. And I knew all of those things would be connected. But it actually got to the point where I was like, was that broken valve someone thinking she is going to be trouble for us in the future? So what we've got to do, so sabotage we've, we've sabotage. got to sabotage the glass factory. We've got to <laughs> close this other thing down. We've got to make a move over there. We've got to shift this money around. We've got to get the person up from Portugal or wherever he came from, like that. And also take out this one person because she is trouble. And Brazil, it, wasn't it? Yeah, Brazil or whatever. Yeah, uh, Portuguese. Yeah, there was some Portuguese. There was some, a few people from Portugal and some people from Brazil. Anyway, my point being that, like, did somebody at the start of this book think, is Jazz the most dangerous person here? Do I need? Do we need to take her out because she's going to be too much now trouble I in the think, future? Now I think you put way too much, too much on her. She's not a main person like you think that. I, I'm just saying she has enemies at the start of this book, and if someone is wanting to take over an underworld operation and do that kind of stuff, she was part of that. She was like the main smuggler. It's revealed later on that she provides all of the uh, black market goods that arrive on the moon. She, it, that, she's the one who controls the supply of drugs and cigarettes and all this Drug other drugs. contraband. Yeah, but that's the point. But if you were some Brazilian mafia wanting to help take over something, wouldn't you want to take out the competition at the start? Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. Uh, that's what I'm saying. Is Was her almost no, dying part that, of the story? It wasn't. It I wasn't. actually think at that point, you, you know, you keep mentioning that she overestimates herself. And I think I that think, is part of that. I Yeah, okay. I, you think that's me oh, thinking yes. that uh, I'm overestimating her importance yes. before the book I starts. Totally yes, okay. think so. Anyway, that's it. We've talked for an hour about Artemis. Um, shall I hope we, we... Didn't spoil too much. Though. No, I think it's good. I might go back and bleep out the person who you say dies because that's not really fair. I I tried really hard not to give away yeah, what you, happens. You, you mentioned him. So I, I I okay. Let's stop talking about it because we're in favor, okay. like we know who it is now. Okay, maybe I'll have to edit that out. Anyway, I'll maybe bleep that over. Let's see. All right. Cool. Thanks a lot for listening. Uh, what oh, no. about the rating? Oh uh, yeah, rating. Okay, what are you going to rate this book? Four. Four stars. Yeah. I was going to give it like three and three stars. So let's give it th- three, three and, and three. So I was going to say three and a half, three stars or something like that. Again, because I do have major problems, some major problems with it. But overall, it was quite enjoyable. It so, was a fun read. Okay, let's, let's call it, let's give it 3.75. Let's average it okay. out. Is that good? Yeah. Because I, I do think it's a book which is fun. It's worth reading. No, I don't think anybody is going to have any big enough problems with this book. It's totally inoffensive enough. Yes. That I if you so. enjoyed The Martian, you're probably going to enjoy this book. If The Martian was too technical and too dry, like, not dry, because it's, it's a funny book, but if that was too heavily involved in technical stuff and air supplies and all this other kind of stuff, this is a bit less. There's other I things going on with the story. I think a little bit better balance between... Yeah, there things. is characters, there is story, there is more interaction, there's more plotting, more there's more stuff. It isn't... Li- more condensed. It isn't just Robinson Crusoe, it isn't just like this person's stuck on a desert island how does he get off go it is more like yeah. okay here's a situation there's lots of people there's lots of moving parts how are they all going 
that come together. So yeah, yeah. there is more stuff going on than this book. However, I think Martian, the Martian audiobook was was one of our few five star books that we both thoroughly enjoyed. Yeah. And it was part of listening together on a car journey here. I was just listening by myself while juggling and doing other stuff on the cruise ship and training in the gym and things. So it was a bit of a different experience. And uh, I don't know. I, yeah, again, the the str- the strengths of the Martian are there, but by trying out some other stuff, it, it falls down a bit. Anyway, Julian is yawning. Um, I'm now actually on a different time zone than Julian, so I'm actually fine totally. at the moment. But I'm going to have to try and get to bed soon, though, and get my um, body clock four hours back again or whatever it needs to happen. Yeah. Right, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Luke Burridge. Julian is on Twitter as well at J-U-K-U Berlin. Yuku Berlin. Julian Kuntenhoff Berlin is what it stands for. Yeah. J-U-K-U Berlin. Um, on Instagram Goodreads. as well. Uh, I'm Yeah, Goodreads. Become our friends on Goodreads. Oh, yeah, that's what I normally do as well. Um, what do people think? What do my friends oh, on no, Goodreads actually, think? Actually, the, the rating... Yeah, is three. Point Point seven one. It's pretty good. Yeah. And among friends is three point six. Yeah. So averaging out, Jenny gives it two stars. Michael four stars. Lindsay four stars. Guillermo two stars. Yeah. Lots of. Oh, I accidentally clicked on the link. Uh, lots of two stars and four stars. I don't see any five stars among friends here. Yeah. Oh, it's quite funny actually. It's like two stars, four stars, four stars, two stars, two stars, stars. four stars. Yeah. There yeah. is a three stars there. Who gave it one? Julie Davis gave it one star. This was a huge disappointment. As Andy Weir's The Martian was a real favorite of mine. Yeah. It's. Uh, Unfortunately, it's something across between a young adult book and an engineering manual featuring aluminium manufacturing. <laughs> <laughs> if this sounds like an awkward mixture, it is because it is. Yeah, I think that's a reason, one of the main reasons why there's no sex in the book is because that he it, it definitely wants to be a book which someone can give it to, like, uh, say, like a 13 to 15-year-old kid, and it'd be fine for that. Sure. And if there were sex scenes in it, it, that wouldn't be yeah. that wouldn't work but like to say here's an indestruct- indestructible condom is kind of a fun thing to read about when you're 14 whereas actually That's like a, a, a moon a gravity a moon and then, gravity and then and then actually sex the, uh, the apparatus that comes along with it yeah so like here's a cleaning apparatus here's for this like indestructible a, condom and it's a reusable uh, thing yeah it is a, it is a comedy it is, i understood what they were going for yeah, with this i was it like was funny. i actually thought this is never going to be used as a sex scene no. but it was never used to like stop a gas leak. And, uh, actually, okay, it, we talked about it. We wanted to wrap it up. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot for listening, and I'll catch you next time. <laughs> Goodbye.